I'm Adam. I'm pretty much probably a regular to all of you. I'm just quickly going to see if uh, this. I'm only putting this up on the screen more as a as a example of how I use technology to to organize my life and it it is only in the last little while that using while well, using um Google, um, Google Keep and all these other things that I finally learned the joy of using, po albeit virtual, post-it notes to keep my life organized, which is something probably some of you have done for years. The... The, intro, the first thing I want to share about the pandemic was when it first started, yes, it was as shocking for me as it was for everyone. But the interesting thing about it was within weeks, there was a shift of basically we were told we were, before the pandemic, the disability community was told, you can't work from home, you can't do this, you can't do that. A week into the pandemic, everybody was encouraged to work from home if their jobs allowed it. And, and the other thing that started to happen within a few weeks. As a person with a disability that loves art and culture, more art and culture from our local community was starting to be streamed into our home, where before the pandemic, we would have to go to the art and culture and in the arts and culture community, there were some places that were like, why do we even bother doing some of these accessibility features when most of our accessible seating or, uh, or the other accessibility features we have aren't used by a lot of people with disabilities? And that's one of the key things I want to talk to you tonight about is because the one thing that probably unifies more people across disability is the fact that at the end of our, the day of dealing with our disability stuff, we don't have the energy always to go out to a show, go out to a big event. If we are going to do that, we have to actually budget our energy. And sometimes we have to actually prime our body for weeks to actually go out in the evening, go out and do the social events. It's not that we don't want the art and culture. We just, the question I always, that came to me soon after the pandemic is why could none of this art and culture be brought into our homes before? On, I know some of the things won't work and I know other people will say money or it'll siphon away audience. But it's interesting how during how this in this sports world, 
all of the events are most of the events um even some minor league sports are all streamed or are on top of it and stuff and they don't complain about empty seats be or they weren't before the pandemic most of the time they were sold out actually they were so desperate for an audience that they were even having events with 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 no audience so the, the question has really been why when there isn't this limit of um channel bandwidth that we had in the old pre-internet days why isn't there more local culture actually streamed to our homes and that this, this is the one and as a civic community why i bring this up is because in the in the in the 15 years before the pandemic everybody was going on and on about toronto's wonderful cultural social renaissance how it was starting to rival some of the cities of europe with all these interesting cultural opportunities and again as a disabled person i can only maybe have the capacity to go to only a few less than an able-bodied person could and even if you ask most everybody here they and stuff and so the i think there are definitely ways we can use technology to share a more of the culture in in the people's homes and bring it to where they are because yeah because some might some nights and most of you found this during the pandemic most of the nights when you're at home maybe maybe you don't have the energy to go out but maybe you actually want something um more um more <laughs> substantial to watch than than the average tv show you want you watched and and people still someone want things that actually challenge them if you know one of the top tv shows during the pandemic for some people was squid game that that just messed with my mind you know you know but so there are options that I think, especially if we, I know not everything will work out, but if we start with this, some of the main civic theaters and some of the civic infrastructure and actually encourage them and actually sort of push them into streaming more of their more of their content online you know we you might have to pay i'm not saying it would be free but but they there wouldn't be such a limit of the thing and it also might take a little bit of pressure off of this idea of everybody of all the culture being so geolinear and it might take some pressure off of uh, some of the real estate in toronto where and see that's the thing 
even if you were a person that said, oh, if I lived closer to all the culture, then, then I could actually go out and do more with the culture. But with the, with the way um, with the way gentrification goes in Toronto, all the little cultural hubs end up being sort of squashed, and then everybody sort of has to go as to disperse to others. So it's not even like you can say, "Oh, I'll live in this district or I'll live in that district." The condo companies want wanted to say, oh, everybody can live in the entertainment district. Let's see where that got people. And it mostly got the old the people that slowly aged out living in a place where they have trouble sleeping because of the club goers and the party goers. The, the other the other quick the other quick thing I wanted to say with this pandemic sort of reminds me of when I was I was a kid. I sort of loved the rainy the really rainy stormy days because usually that's when and my parents would let the neighborhood come in and play in our house because if they played in the house, I could maybe do a bit more socialization with that. So on the rainy days, I would get to play until the sun started to come up. And the problem with the way where we live was we live near a creek. So of course, as soon as the as soon as the rain stopped, all the kids would usually want to run down to the creek because that's when the frogs and the tadpoles and everything and the worm and uh, and so the creek was the most inaccessible place. So so as we're coming out of the pandemic. In some ways, I know I'll do okay, but I'm sort of feeling like, okay, everybody's ready to race off and run off to the creek. So, and, and stuff. And the other thing, the other, the other point that Tom missed earlier that I also wanted to say was even even if we wanted to believe that everybody everybody could go out to all these um social events and and the accessibility was perfect and stuff. If you if you look at um, the television ratings for streaming and the stats on streaming shows, you would know that most of the people, at least half the population of the city, is usually in in the evenings watching watching a screen. It isn't like, because it's not just the disabled, it's the parents with children, it's other exhausted people after work, other people that are starting to have mental burnout that would not necessarily identify as being disabled. They're the ones that are more of that can use some of the same culture. The other interesting thing to know about technology and the disabled and other people is one of the first social media projects in Toronto was actually a site that I, I think is still 
is so active, it's gone through a few permeation. Was a, a program called Ability Online. Um, and that was more, that was geared for people with disabilities to actually be able to have pen pals and be able to communicate with each other because they started to realize Especially for kids that lived in places where there weren't a lot of people with disabilities, was that was that they needed they needed uh, ways to they, they needed ways to connect. I I'm seeing this comment about um uh on and I will I will I will let you know the, the there is the one the one key thing life hack that I've learned with doing all this virtual stuff and most people will notice that other than when I'm actually doing this presentation and you know as i'm doing the presentation i can see why most people think they have to constantly look at the screen if you were sitting around a boardroom or sitting around i know you would actually want to think you were always constantly looking at the speaker and stuff but yeah your body more wanders and and stuff like that if you've ever watched me while i'm on screen you notice that my head's turning i'm doing all these things i still keep my camera on to show people that if they want to get my attention i'm there but i don't i don't i don't really make a big deal of the fact that people are watching so that that i may be moving around so my neck doesn't get spastic or any of those things so i think even in the years to come when there are probably still going to be times we're all going to have to put our face in this in these little boxes is you don't have to always magically look at the sun and one one last one last tech tip i'm gonna uh, i'm i'm going to give you all and this isn't something that i'm breaching a fable which believe it or not was a job i got after coming for two civic tech for the first time because it was referenced here by um a fellow civic techer is the one the one thing i want to mention is if you're if you're ever wanting to know the usability of any any apps or any websites you're actually building is to to actually challenge yourself, not to use them on the device that you actually prefer to use them, or in most cases, programmed them on, or are really interested in using them on, is to try using them on your phone. Try using uh, and just seeing if you can actually use them on these many devices because in 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 this new world of people um coming on the world wide web and using the world wide web they are using they are using they are using multiple different devices 
they may be using their phone for websites you would have never thought to use their fo your phone for. So I'm ch I challenge you, even even before you start doing the deep dive into total accessibility testing, is to actually see can your can your little favorite apps or websites or even your could somebody if they wanted to use these well on a phone or tablet or other device or even the browser on their smart TV. End of thought. I will now take questions until the MC says we have to go on to uh, next steps. Awesome, thanks Adam. Um, if anyone has questions, please put a Q or another letter in the chat and then I'll let you know that it's your turn to ask a question. Yes, yeah, Sabelle. Thanks Adam for all that, that's super great. Uh, I'm wondering if you can talk about the hybrid experience um what your experience has been so far of hybrid events since that's what it seems like we're often going into this in this post-crisis period uh, some i've only been to actually one or two events post-pandemic that you would actually say were more more hybrid but it's it's, a, it's sort of like it would still sort of be like virtual first in person second where as we are reckoning with with actual true in person events where the people the people on the virtual end are probably going to be the ones that are actually have the problem. And the biggest battle, I think, for Harper is making sure if you're in a discussion to make sure that uh, that every that the audio is good. The hardest thing even when you were on conference calls before the pandemic, is it making sure that you could actually hear everybody else that was actually in 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 the room? And that that is where that is where it can it can be real real troublesome. Even if it's even if it's four or five people that were at an organization that were in an office space, uh, and and that's where and that's where some some hybrid things will work great. Some um some hybrid um some high hybrid hybrid things will probably work awful but the main the main thing to know and this was what i was also told in filming at an england and even try if the sound on something is great your body can really ignore bad audio or bad video but if the if the video the video could be perfect, but the audio is glitchy and a mess. Yeah, no, but everybody does way worse than that. With that, so so this is why I even encourage a, a music venue. To, they could easily stream the audio of their um um. Thing. Or the other amazing thing was how many churches 
that would have never streamed before the pandemic are still live streaming now. And a lot of them say that they they probably could never turn off their streams because they would actually lose members. That, that's also to know. Are there any other questions or comments? Yeah, this is great. Um, and just before we go to the next question, I see Sabelle mentioned something about testing your audio sound. I'm curious if anyone has any tips on testing your audio because I have always wondered how my audio sounds. Um, but the next question is coming in from Ingrid. Hey there. Um, great, great talk, Adam. I, I always learn from you. And I also learned from Daniela also on, uh, on Walk Toronto. And um, I am building platforms, the Esri story maps that many of you guys have seen. And I always try and make sure that they have, that all the images have alternative text and that they work for screen readers and that and I and I'm thinking ahead to the election and I you know we talk so much more about equity and about um, more space on our streets for everybody and that includes sidewalks where wheelchairs have space and I often wonder uh, one of the things you mentioned in your in your intro um, that you had was about organizing, and I I believe that your voices need to be heard and they need to be heard loudly. And I'm I'm just wondering what are some of the ways that I can help with that, especially when it comes up to the election, because um, I I just think that there's there's there your voices need to be amplified, and I'm not sure what's the best way to do that. Thank you. Why well, I meant that was because I think this is one of the pluses. Yeah. Is that even, even if people with a disability are spread more out, we now, even though, you know, some of us may want to even scale back, but there are still the tools that can really connect us and I can be connected with disability people from across Canada mm -hmm. on certain things. It, it's the more accessible version of the iron and rails that actually bridge this country together. Huh. When we came in Confederation, remember the first call before BC said they would join, and a lot of the provinces are west before they would join, and you know they they wanted the railroad to connect, and and there is a, now a way for us to connect and communicate and or organized um one of the one of the first big events i was at during the pandemic um during the summer was an online event where barack obama actually was able to um add a zoom add a zoom like it was a webinar style Zoom, but it was still more more in the mind than you know, even watching him do a TED talk, and it was mostly on what he thought he did well as president and also his failures with what he wanted to get done for the. American disabled. So it's, you know, it, it's one of these things that originally, because this was for that movie Crip Camp, they were going to do tours to different cities and show the screening to people with disabilities because they realized that 
it was on Netflix and it might not be financially accessible. But because of the pandemic and because, you know, most of the people in this were were actually um um you know it couldn't obviously travel during the pandemic and this was in the first year we couldn't get out they they made it virtual and so we would get on zoom every every week and just talk about different disability issues and it was during the summer of George Floyd. And so we actually would talk about it in our sex an hour. And that, so rather than have just some, some people come and see Obama speak maybe when they were in when when they were in Chicago or Washington and he was a producer on the movie about 500 of us got to actually hear him speak on the issue and some of us were able to ask questions and interact and and Sybil right in the chat she wrote that it's an important film to watch and it's it's, it's one of those things that uh, where you know it shows how social connections can help with organizing any more questions yeah we just have time for one more question which is great because we have one more question from jennifer um i just wanted to offer a comment actually um recently i was trying to figure out how to do uh to texting with my voice and um adam's been slowly helping me um figure that out and um be because because i i do have one hand that i type with but sometimes I find it very um, tiring to type all the time. And I, I end up typing the wrong things. But the frustrating thing with using my voice is that sometimes Surrey or Google or whatever I'm using at that time does not rec does not recognize what I'm trying to say. I was trying to to text with somebody and it's uh, last week and it said happy birthday. And that wasn't even close to what I had to what to what I had said. But you know, I I would just like to know um what is what I can do to improve that? It, well, it is getting it is getting better, and there are definitely. <laughs> Definite ways that you know that um, technology can help, as uh, as long as all the AI machines don't go sentient at Google, they are using um, a few of their key AI systems to look at speech patterns for people with disability and actually work out um, how to help them facilitate conversation. Uh, um, as social host, I will be staying in the main room, but if people still have questions or want to make comment, I'm happy to um, 
stay and argue anybody that want to after pitching. Awesome, thanks, Adam. Um, thanks for this great presentation, but also thank you for all the little tweaks that you've helped us make to make online hack nights more accessible. I know you've done a lot of work and it's all these like little pieces that build up into this bigger picture that is a better night for everyone. And sometimes yeah. it's easy to miss the small things, um, but it has added up into something really big. So thank you for your time. Um,